Not when you're feeling good, not when that uh, double espresso hits or the free primer workout hits, when you don't want to. And there's many times I, I remember not wanting to get out of bed, not wanting to train again. When I was a youngster, I hadn't even made it. But I had a, I had a vision to buy mom a house, to buy my mom a house that had wallpaper on it. And that, that, that got me through. That made me have that great mindset. So whatever it is, you need to have something, a vision, that, a purpose that will allow that, will help with that motivation. So that's the first one, have a great mindset. And the second one would be set the standards high. Be the standard setter. You don't need to be the smartest guy in the room. You don't need to be the best looking guy in the room, like my bro here. You don't need to have the biggest muscles to work hard. So think in your life, if you can think, have a great mindset, but set the standards. So I'm the, I'm the guy in this room that's prepared to bust, bust my chops every day. Probably a bit of, bit of terminology. Bust, bust my chops every day. I'm gonna work harder than anyone in the street. And that's how you get your, your, your teammates respect. Not just from a physical point of view, but from a, say, for example, a moral, moral point of view. Be that guy that sets the standard. Be the guy that, you know, not everyone wants to be around, but they all respect because you set the standard. So be that guy. So that's my two messages. What was my two messages? So almost all to work hard. Yep. To the office. Make sure that, you know, so if you work hard, I'll be able to respect you, not just by a people. <laughs> Alright boys, anyone um, open to the floor? Cool. Anyone have any questions? You can ask me anything too. Yes. What do you like the most? What do you like the most? Rugby league, rugby union, or rugby? Oh wow. Four different challenges. When, I'm, when I was a rugby league player, I love rugby league. When I was a rugby union player, I love rugby union. I believe that when you're in something to be authentic, you've got to be in it to win it. You can't be thinking about anything else at that time. So that, that was my mindset and I think boxing, the reason why I love boxing is because I, you know, I was never the greatest boxer, but it was a challenge. And I understand, you know, with, with my mindset, the great mindset is putting yourself out there, putting yourself in new challenges, but prepared to work hard. And with boxing, that's all, all it is. It's a challenge. Um, I may lose, I may win, but I know I'll grow from it. How do you handle pressure, especially in big games? Yeah, it's a great question, man. Pressure in big games. I think pressure in big games, pressure in life comes in all forms. I call it the stormy weather of life, and it's gonna hit everyone. But your boat needs to be equipped. Your boat needs to be equipped to deal with that pressure, to deal with the storm, stormy weather, the stormy waters. And for me, I'm a Muslim. It's my faith. That's my, I guess, my base. That's my go-to. When the stormy weather of life hits, I go back. I draw on the strength of Islam, I draw on the strength of my Creator, but that message is a simple one because it's whatever walk of life you have. You've got to have something that you believe in that's greater than yourself. You know, you've got to have something in your life that isn't just materialistic. So I was a youngster and I wanted to buy my the house of Warpit when I was young. So when I got to 18, Alhamdulillah, I achieved that. I achieved that, yeah? But then it was, what now? Always, you're always searching, you're always searching. So, you know, whatever it is, it's got to it's got a cable for that space because um, when the stormy weather of life hits, that's what we're holding with this thing. Right now, you've given a lot of sorry, sir. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you've given a lot, a lot of good advice as well. But what was the best piece of advice you got growing up when you when you go going for that goal? Uh, man, uh, my mother. So my mother and my father both dropped out of school at 13, 14. Didn't have an academic background, but my mother was white and my father was black. And they were together in the 1970s. So a lot of you families, a lot of you boys come from interracial uh, marriages. And that's what I, I, I had. But my mom, um, she always stood for justice and stood what was for, right, for what was right. She walked down the street with my dad, for example, and people would stand and spit on the floor because they were together. And she always taught me when I was young, the cook cook in a good step was it doesn't matter who you are, um, what colour you are, what ethnicity you are, it matters how you are as a person. So when I go back to my point of setting the standards, black, white, yellow, orange, pink, if you set the standards as a, as a morally good person, you'll be okay. What was your best memory of that? Man, best me memory of rugby has been a few. Um, oh, that was, yes, yes. France was a good time, actually. 
And we had a really good time in France, but probably putting on the black jersey for the first time was special. Obviously winning the World Cup. Uh, but then also winning, who here knows what Super Rugby is? So when I, I won it in 2012 against Crusaders. But in 2000, uh, 2000, yeah, 2000, 2011, I played for the Crusaders. And it was a gun side. And you had all the best players in the world playing for They wanted me to stay. Uh, Todd Black had wanted me to stay down there. And I kind of wanted to stay, but I wanted to go closer to my mother. And I was sick of travel. So I went to the Chiefs. The Chiefs what? The Chiefs came second to last the year before. So we were a bunch of misfits. It's all different nationalities. We all came together with a common cause, a vision. And uh, winning it with them was special, man. But not so much the final. The final was great, but it was the semi final with the same three seasons. But here we are, we're playing a team that's pretty much all black. We've got guys that just fuck all around the, the country and we just mumble after the fight, you know? Your old teammates give you a couple of Oh, we'll, we'll get, I'll give them a couple of back right away. <laughs> <laughs> Sonny Bill, you used to live in Australia. Australia. Yes. Which one do you like the most? <coughs> Australia Pie or Kiwi Pie? I, I, I still live in Australia. You still live in Australia. So, so my wife is Kate Malay. So she's Malaysian. Oh. And she's the boss of my house. So I don't know about you guys, but the uh, Malaysians, yeah, the ladies, you are very calm in your demeanor. But man, you guys must you guys are really feisty, so uh, my, my wife is staying in Australia. We live in Australia. Not going back. I, I, I would love to go back to New Zealand, but like I said, I'm off the boss. That's <laughs> <laughs> good advice for you young guys, eh? <laughs> As you said, there's a lot of people around you who may not have liked you. To say there were people close to you that were disrespecting you. Sometimes, man. You know, sometimes when, for example, for example, uh, after a game, the boys want to go out. Some of the boys want to go out. And I was strong enough to say, no, I'm not going out. It's not my way of life, but that's not what, how I get down. And, you know, I could tell maybe there's some, oh, look good as this guy just years, you know what I mean? But I, 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 I walked that path, and I've tried not to walk that path. Because I try to stroke to hang my head on that, that have that moral compass, you know? Um, I didn't get it right all the time. But generally speaking, you know, that way of being gains respect. You may not gain all the friends in the world, but as long as I always thought, as long as I'm being a good person, um, hate me or love me, you know, they will respect me. When you change from league to union, especially straight back into the old very quickly, was there any animosity towards that? That change? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, well, I'm always from then. Uh, yes. Uh, I think, um, you know, in 80 I could kind of feel it. But I was always a guy that was just like um, the first said, I always just try to be a good person, try to be a good man. And um, especially within the team, my mindset was whatever team I was in, uh, I was all about earning the boys' respect. And on the field and off the field. And I think. That, with that, uh, that way of being, you have to be humble in your approach. I can't walk in the team because I've won a couple of NRL titles. Or, you know, I've won a World Cup going back into the league. You know, I know it all. Anyone, you know, you can learn from anyone. Uh, that's, how I, that's how I used to carry myself. No matter if it's the coach, it's the captain, or it's the guy that's starting off. So, I think that, having that mindset um, really helped me in the team. I'm sure there's some more to say. The last couple of questions. Look. The news through an offer. <laughs> Still got it. I'm, uh, you know, I've lost my touch a bit, but I uh, maybe maybe that's a drill that maybe that's a drill that we can go through to uh, offloading drill. But I think people see the flashiness here. You know, the over the top of that. Uh, on the field, but there's many, many hours that go into it. Many, many hours, and, and that's the beauty of where you guys are at. Just go out there and express yourself, go out there and have fun. And you know, whether it's guys like Quay Cooper or whoever it may be on the field, you see them, they're out there expressing themselves, and it looks like they're doing these fancy moves, but these are the things that they just done at your age. And that's what I used to do. I used to love doing offloads. I used to love trying to be the biggest hit on the field. And it just carries on to the older 
when you were their age, on your own, how many hours of training a day did you do on your own? So, I've been doing about a thousand hours a month on it, which has been great. We're actually in New Zealand, like, with the house that I grew up in, and most of the in New Zealand, most young, young boys, we don't come from a lot. We can't afford paid, um, paid sports, swimming, tennis. Uh, whatever it may be, but we can afford one of these. And what do we, we where do we come from? A household that had many, many kids. So in my, we're growing up, I was just going to get the ball. We didn't have a lot of, uh, we didn't even have um, PlayStation or anything like that. We just got outside and play. Cousins, friends, neighbors. And the beauty of that is, bro, I'm eight. I'm playing against 14, 15 year old boys in the backyard and they're trying to smash me. So you, you've got to learn to run offload and, you know. Um, and that's what I say, I say the best teacher is your, you and, and your boys, you know, get out there, play, um, get the ball in your hand. And the one thing I remember going to the All Blacks, uh, when, uh, when I first went back to rugby, Steve Hansen, I went to go on the field once and he came come on the mic and he said, bro, he said, Sonny, mate, whatever you know, don't offload. This was my first year in All Blacks. You fast forward two years later, there was a, there was a whole section in the All Blacks that was called KBI, the ball alive. We used to practice it, but that was for me just, so yeah, he said don't offload the first probably tackle I've done, I, I try to offload. But it's just, you know, I worked on that skill set when I was young, and then I just backed myself. And I think that's, that's the evolution of rugby, is, is young boys with a skill set, going out there and just backing themselves, and, and having that fun, playing, having that element of fun. You know? So that's why I always say part of it, we always need to remember, the higher I got, the, the, the more I used to remember why I love playing this game. Because I love doing it. Mm. <laughs> 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 well, I think that leads us on perfectly kind of to what we're into now. So we're into our coaches' rotation. Okay, same teams we just had for them games of two touch. Hey, going around to the coaches, we are working on our offload skill. So as soon as he does come round and you can show him up that fair play, mm -hmm. with a pass like that, then I don't think you've got any chance. Let's go. How's it going, boys? Come on. So you're, you, uh, what I thought, what I saw was you're thinking offload before the tackle. Don't think offload. Think beat the tackler, tackler. And then the offload is second. So you just think that, beat the tackler, and then you get past the gain line, and then you see what's up. Alright, try that. You guys, support players, give him a bit of time. Let him do his thing. Use your full work, whatever it is. Beat the tackler. It opens up space. So when you get past the line, the defender, when it gets past, when you beat the defender and offload, it creates space from you and the support for the support player to come and push through. It opens up, it opens up, so it's more clear, all right? So think that, you're thinking offload before, you're not gonna be dynamic, you're not gonna be powerful, all right boys? Yeah, uh, okay, and then you keep going through, okay? Next pad, let's go. That's all right, yeah, that's all right. So support players, remember, give them a bit of time. Yeah, let me go. I want to hear left or right, alright? You see what he did, boys? Yeah, yeah. You got a beat, you got a beat the defender. Beat the defender, alright? Beat the defender. Get past him. Support players, wait, 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 support, support, wait, 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 wait. That's it, that's better, that's better. Right, right, right! Right, right, right! Follow it, follow it, follow it, follow it! Backwards! Follow! Follow! Right, 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 right! 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 Right, right,
I love the word that it says power. So whatever way you can generate power, generally speaking, in the past, you can uh, deliver that pass to get it. I'm not the best pass in the world, I'm not going to say I am. One thing I would always see Aaron for, for example, was practicing, and he would practice with no fear. So for example, this is practice here. Yeah? Charlie. He would go up and I'd see him. <laughs> he's pumping it, he's pumping it. But I see some, some of you, just to be safe, I'm going to pick it up. You know? Don't be safe in yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got to put in the effort and the time. But when you do it, try and, try and push yourself. Try and be great. Power. You know? You'll get it wrong a lot of the times, but then you'll start slowly improving. But if you're going to always stay safe, you ain't going to improve too much. And what he's saying, boys, is with his friends, it's expressive. Because you're sure enough, you want to do something a bit different, right? So if you want to do a Superman, you might be in that position to do it. Do it. Do it. That's what he's saying. If the ball's in the front, pick it and throw it, yeah? And die. Coach, okay? are, all, are all of these guys happy? Turning into one is the rest we're trying. So, so the one thing I, and I, I used to piss the, the hell out of me. One other tip I'll say about halfbacks is you guys got to be the barkers in the team. You guys got to demand the most, especially out of the forwards. Because if you guys want to look good, which we all do on the field, where do you want the ball? How do you want the ball? Clean. On a platter. It's all I used to hear Nagy say. I want to get in there. And if they're not, if they're not working hard at the breakdown and they're giving you shit ball, you guys are going to look shit. You know what I mean? Barkers. Thank you very much. Thanks, coach. Cool. The supporters and where do they need to come from, bro? Yeah. Uh, brother, where should where do you want to offload? Am I, do you want to offload? Say you're in the tech. Where do you want to offload? Where, where do you want? Do you want me to stand here? No, I'm in closer. Closer. And I need to know you're next to me. Okay, so we'll show you. It's hard for me to know to look around. So I will be in the middle. Left hook shot, left hook shot. Bang.